and the mornings after football Sunday seem dark even when the sun is shining. If you're suffering nightmares from being trampled by wild buffalo, are you feeling that your soul is tired even in the happiest of moments? Or if you now have a fear of aggressive dolphins, you could be suffering from sports fan depression. When your bed and the pitch black of your room offer more comfort than a loved one's embrace after Monday night football loss, every fan has their share of ups and downs however. When these depressed feelings of the NFL season start to dominate everyday life, they become what is known as NFL fan depression. If you've struggled with sports fan depression before, if you've tried other medications and nothing seems to help, we here at the Unemployed Scholars Network have trained mental health football fan counsellors on staff to help you. Independent study participants have experienced relief of depression symptoms within as little as two weeks through our group therapy sessions. You deserve to feel present in the football season moment, to have energy feel the sunshine and to be yourself as a die-hard fan again. We know that the only true solution is fans coming together to share their experiences. We will now take you to one of our sessions at our facility. Today's session will be coordinated by our founder T-Squared, the Renaissance man, our founder and chief specialist. Hello, good people. This is T-Squared, head chief counselor here at the Unemployed Scholar Sanctuary. And starting with a little bit of background about myself, I'm a Dallas Cowboys fan. So with over 28 years of heartbreaking seasons and losses, I can more than help you guys navigate through the troubled waters of NFL sports fan depression. The saying goes, it takes a village, and that village is right here. So first, just to kind of break the ice with everyone, um, I'm going to start with myself. As recently as this season, it's when we went on the road to Buffalo and we get grounded like some sea salt to some fine powder and dust to a blowout game. And probably the most disappointing part of that blowout game was the fact that our defense just quit by halftime. Them cats was thinking about getting zestfully clean in the showers after the game before we even got to the third quarter. And last but not least point that I want to make. This was recorded right after we had our little Detroit Lions game. And I know, we, you guys cheated and the referees and it's a controversial call, but I didn't see nearly any of the same kind of energy when Michael Parsons got that rough in the passer call on that Miami Dolphins game, which led to them actually getting the actual touchdown. Here's a, here's a, a picture of all the times that there were holding penalties that weren't called. It was one point in that game someone was pulling um, C.D. Lamb's pants so far out it looked like one of those cartoon babies when you're getting his diaper pulled out. They didn't even throw a flag on that one. That looked like a flag to me. We saw nothing but plumbers crack. Once you see plumbers crack, it's time to throw a flag. Those Miami Dolphins was pulling jerseys like Dick Sporting Goods employees during a Black Friday sale. Tell me if I'm lying. But I digress. The whole point of this session is not about me. It's about you. So I'm going to open up the floor and see how many of you brave souls are willing to come forward to talk about how your team has hurt you this season and what it means to you as a fan and how we can get through this first step to conquer sports fan depression. First up we have on via satellite Terence aka DJ T Dub of Spin Syndicate DJs. Mm, let's see. Me being a Giants fan, when did they let me down this season? I can tell you the exact moment. It was actually before the season when they didn't address the offensive line and their play has been offensive. They literally pulling people off the street and off a practice squad and starting. This is a travesty that it is even going on this long. They literally got my starting QB killed had his neck snap, then the backup QB, and then one of third string QB. 
So yes, I'm a Giants fan and I love my Giants. But they are disappointing and they let me down because they didn't address the offensive line. The offensive line is putrid. I'm 50 and I can get a sack on them bastards. My name is Terrence and I'm an alcoholic. Shout out to my man T-Dub for being the brave soul to step forward first to talk about being a Giants fan. I think your Giants are missing the mark, man. I know one way you can get your personnel field real quick. And that would be that gentleman that's on the sideline, which is known as DeVito Sports Agent. Oh yeah. Looking at that cat, I think he knows a couple of people, if you know what I mean. I think it takes one cell phone for him to call and get somebody from the block to get some nice beefy linemen to help you guys out up front. You know, he could pick up the cell phone at any minute, call up some dude named Tommy Fingers from the block, and he knows a couple of guys who knows a couple of guys, if you know what I mean. So you might want to put that dude to work. Reporting live, we have Teron, a.k.a. V.A. Fresh, the S is a dollar sign because that's what he gets. What's up? It's your boy, V.A. Fresh. That's a dollar sign. That's what I get. I'm here to tell you that as a Falcon fan, week 15 was the most trash week ever seen from the Falcons. We lost 9-7 to the worst team in the NFC South. We were one win away from clinching the NFC South, which is the worst division in the NFL, by the way. You didn't know. Okay. I just want to take my boys to Mercedes-Benz Stadium so they can at least see a playoff game. Can't do that. Because you got Desmond Ritter, who, you know what? It's easier to show you. Hold on one second. Easier to show you, right? Check this out. You see that? Right there. This is the crucial point in the game. You got Kyle Pitts double covered. He got two people on him. Drake London, who just caught a 21-yard pass to get you to the 20. Wide open. He's right there. He's right there. He's right there. Wide open. What does he do? Throws a whole interception at the goal line. All you had to do was win this one game, man. And you'd have had the NFC South clinched. You would have made the, to the playoffs. It's hard wearing this stuff, man. The only reason I, I can't wear it is because I'm from Virginia. And as you can see, you know, we got Vic. I, I only rock Vic. Okay? Because that was the last good quarterback the Falcons ever had. Bottom line. So I'm not taking off my Vic jersey until they get a better quarterback. And Desmond Ritter, you're not it. And uh, when you ever need an Atlanta representative, I'm here for you. I'm not here for Desmond Ritter. Looks like an extra from The Simpsons. How you got curly and nappy hair at the same time. I just don't get it. So yeah, they need to sit him down. And, oh yeah, they need to fire the coach. Yeah, he need to go too. Because he don't know whether he want a goatee or he want to shave his face. Every other week, I see a goatee, then a mustache, then he shave it off. Then you get a goatee, then a mustache. How you go from a goatee to a mustache? I don't... We're not doing this. Reporting to you live from Decatur, Georgia. It's your boy VA Fresh. That's is a dollar sign because that's what I get. Falcons. Whew. Sheesh. I tell you what, my heart goes out to you, VA Fresh. You know, it was hard being a Falcons fan after that happens. But I know at least one late Christmas present came for you. It looks like from the coaching staff of the Atlanta Falcons, your boy Desmond Ritter got himself a nice, creamy, savory, hot bowl of sit your ass down. Yeah, they got him benched for the rest of the season, so I don't think you got to worry about him because he's going to be too busy snacking on some sit your ass down for the rest of this season. All right, my dear friend, it appears that we just got a letter in from Chris Claggett as well. I won't send you a video about my greatest Chicago Bears letdown this year because it's a simple statement. 
poor coaching and development of Fields. Fields may not be the answer at quarterback, but no one will know until he's properly developed. This entire season has been summed up in one word, disappointment. Ouch. I tell you what, Claggett, my heart goes out to you, my man. I'll tell you one thing, though. I think your problem is one simple, one simple name, not one simple word, but one simple name. Eberflus. First of all, what the hell is a Eberflus? That, that has to be one of the worst names in mankind, a uh, Eberflus. What is a Eberflus? It, 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 it kind of sounds like some rare, like scientific device, like in a laboratory, like, like, hey man, check over there by that flask over there nearby the centrifuge and hand me that Eberflus. I mean, if I'm in that locker room, I'm gonna be like, man, I'm a grown man. I'm not about to go into battle and risk my life and limb for a man named Eberflus. Sounds like a Jim Henson puppet. You know what? It sounds like some kind of rare disease that just got discovered. In my mind, I can almost picture like a breaking news report talking about a, a Eberflus virus that's breaking out. It, it, it would probably kind of sound like this. Hello and welcome to Unemployed Scholars News. I'm your host, Naomi Nickerson. Today, the city of Chicago is grappling with a new strain of a virus, and we're here to shed some light on the situation. The Eberflus virus, recently discovered, is causing severe NFL franchise infection syndrome, and it seems no team is immune. First identified during Bears training camp, this virus has left a trail of devastation in its wake. Symptoms of the Eberflus virus include fever, chills, a perpetual losing season, and a noticeable lack of quarterback development. It's a contagion that spreads faster than a well-executed flea flicker, and its impact is felt not just on the field, but in the morale of fans and the hopes of the franchise. Stay clear of any members of the Bears' coaching staff, practice good draft hygiene, and, most importantly, avoid unnecessary exposure to Eberflus-infected game plans. Matthew Eberflus? Sit your ass down. Oh, we running a buffet today. We got an extra bowl to sit your ass down for Matt Eberflus too as well. Come and get it. Sit your ass down. Sit, you boo. Sit. Good dog. Huh. Man, that almost made me upset. I'm not even a Bears fan. But, um, groundbreaking stuff, guys. I, I feel like we made a breakthrough today. We have got through the first session. We got through the ice breaking session and we've come forward and made ourselves vulnerable as NFL fans in the moment. As long as we continue to stick together, we can all make sure that we prosper. So until our next session, this is T-Squared signing out.